All right, uh, Howie, n nice to meet you, first of all. And usually these days, one syllable. Okay, how? Yeah. How? How are you doing? Good enough. First, okay. First, I'd like to ask you about what you yourself called your Harry Dean Stanton moment. You played in a Dutch movie yes. called Jackie. Yeah. How did that come about? Ah, uh, well, a tiny piece of paper with an invitation inscribed, handed to a DJ in Madrid by one of your uh, uh, citizens who apparently was an actress, suggesting that during her series of singer-songwriter shows in Utrecht that uh, I come and participate in said merriment. And so one day I did and, uh, and was enchanted with the palette of her iPod. It was a brilliant cache of musical selections on her iPod. And, uh, and what was there? Stuff I never heard of. And it all, everything she played sounded really good to me. And I thought, how come I haven't heard this? Because usually I've heard everything. So, so I met somebody who had more than I had to offer as far as that. Now you got to tell who this person is because otherwise people are just... Uh, a woman named Carice Van Houten. And then we got to talking and because she was an actress I kind of confided in her my uh, plan B dream of being the next Harry Dean Stanton and knew that the likelihood was rapidly decreasing with every year passing. So right about Christmas time last year she played the Santa the, the, and offered me a, a position based on director approval of being Harry Dean Stanton for three minutes in a film they were shooting in New Mexico which is just next door to us. And, um, and I had the pleasure of fulfilling my dream thanks to her, Santa Clarice. So you didn't have any previous experience in acting? No, they, they said, the, the director, Antoinette, said she'd rather a, a, a guitar player who couldn't act instead of a, an actor who couldn't play guitar. And some of the songs you played in the movie came to play a big role on the next record. Yeah, see, then, you know, um, she virtually, Carice virtually became the, a role of a muse and, and had me spark to come up with some songs for the film to just play it, not the soundtrack, but just live on the porch for her sister to sing. And, and then the songs were very raw at the time, but by the time uh, this year rolled around and we were recording, or was it the same year? No, I think it was the same month. The same month we started recording uh, the new Giant, Giant Sand album. This was last year? Wow, now I'm completely confused. Was it the same December? Yeah, it was all in one <laughs> month. I know in October you played in France at a, at a festival. That's what kind of... Nancy? Yeah. For, for oh, no, that Switzerland. was in Vevey. Yeah, Vevey. Yeah, the French yeah. Switzerland. Yeah. French. French. Swiss, yeah. Paris, southern, right on the Lake Geneva there, Vevey, right outside of Montreux. It was a Heartland Festival, and they, that was the second time we performed as Giant, Giant Sand, and it had grown to a 12-piece. And then we recorded the next day to see what we sounded like, and then it sounded pretty good. So that was, that was at the end of October, and then in December I did the filming, and then we went to record right after that and then had those songs. Um, I want to talk about that a bit later, but um, on the album cover, it's called a country rock opera. W what makes it a country rock opera? Well, it's, it's, an, it's a pasticcio. It's a collection of songs unintentionally assembled for the singular opera. It's not a proper opera. It's not a proper, it's a rock opera, which is a loose term 
but specifically because we tend to use uh, more of a country motif. It's a country rock opera. But we're kind of redefining the term country rock. It's not, it's not your father's country rock. It's not New Riders of the Purple Sage. It's not the Flying Burrito Brothers.